Hey guys, Insomnia here with some more AFK Arena. Today we are back with our Wilder account and I'm super stoked as you can see, 21,000 diamonds. So we have a ton of summons going on today. Looking at the team, which were focused essentially on Wilders only at this point. We have copies of Sierras, copies of Kaz. We have a ton of copies of Gorvo. Who is who? The hero that we're focused on building right now is Gorvo. So we are going to continue our progression on there. And we are also working on Taylene. As you can see, we do have one spare copy there, meaning we need three. We only need three copies of Taylene, and she will be ascended. And then we're going to focus on the twins. We do want to build the twins because they are vital not only to boss fights, um, but to the Twisted Essence, the Twisted Realm as well. Abyssal Expedition, very, very powerful hero to have overall. So we will build the twins once Taylene is completed. So let's go ahead, we'll get into the summons here. So first of all, we're always gonna use our stones. As you can see, we have seven elite hero soul stones. So I'm hoping we pull some solid wilders out of here, which we get double. Look at that double Leica, that is awesome. We got Rose, we got Oscar, we got Sophia, but double Leica, which will automatically add a star to her. And I think that might take her to being completely maxed out at this point. Rare stones, we have 41. So over the past week and a half, we got a lot of rare stones. We did go through and finish out um, the Misty Valley. So we did get the rewards out of there. So looking at the Temple of Ascension, there is our copy and that will do it for Leica. So absolutely, completely maxed out. We do have her at five stars now. We do have her furniture. So we can actually drop her out of the wish list. continuing to focus again on Gorvo at this point. So let's go ahead, make sure the wish list is updated. And as you can see, we're starting to get a lot more five-star heroes, meaning that as we continue to build them, we will drop them out, replace them with other heroes, and then continue the focus on those heroes. Right now, I believe we're going to go with Kaz or Gorvo, which again, I'm thinking Gorvo. Um, Javid made the recommendation to build Gorvo, so we definitely want to see him. If we can pull some food here, we can build Gorvo, which will be absolutely phenomenal. 46 cards here, so we do need three copies of Taylene. We're going to go ahead and do our summons. Hopefully, we can pull one or two copies. Three would be simply amazing. First one, we just get a little bit of loot. Not even much artifact fragments there. Second pull is just the same. No elite cards. Still have never seen the 30,000 diamonds, which hopefully we could see one time. Non-faction gear, which isn't good at all. Did get a couple of the fragments there. In our final copy, we still need three. Final one is, got some gear and did get a light bearer card, but look at that, four cards, no copies of Taylene, which is about on par to the amount of summons that you do with the Stargazer. So here we do have 201 of our companion points. So again, hoping to get some Wilders here, which we get an elite right there. Very, very nice, a copy of Saurus. Definitely using him. He is getting close to five stars as well. And then we're going to start just putting food in the wish list. That's really the only thing we're going to need. Um, once these heroes are completed, it is going to go to food. We are not going to summon here. Gorvo, we have enough copies to get him all the way up to Ascended. But we need food, so we're actually going to save this. We still have 23 days left. So we still have a lot of opportunities to do the summons if we're looking for a specific hero. Which I'm hoping to pull a couple elites out of here and pulling some more of our rare food so we can level up some other heroes would be ideal and another elite right there which is Theowin. so we unlock Theowin for the first time unfortunately the heroic ship for her is not here right now but there is our first copy we're also continuing to build all of the faction accounts um just for the fact pushing the tower that is how we got so many cards that we just use in the stargazer Continuing to push the faction towers allows us not only to get more emblems, but we also do get a lot of stargazers out of there. Every 10 floors, you get five cards, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and we'll get into the diamonds here, which are second summon. So our third one, this one will be an elite pull. Every third, remember, is an elite pull here, which there we go. Bottom left, it is a copy of Rowan. Very nice, super powerful support between him and Taylene kind of tied for the number one support role. As you can see here, we are pretty full in the temple. 
going to have to go through, build out a lot of the heroes here, use some of the food that we actually have for the off factions. Ascended there, as you can see in Light Bears, we're starting to get a lot of Ascended heroes across the board and across all the accounts. Double right there, look at that, which we got a copy of Scarath and Drez. Drez is a hero that I definitely want to build on the Mauler account. Haven't had enough copies to build him yet, but I definitely want to build him and see just how powerful he is. Unfortunately, we are full again. So there's another copy of Angelo, a couple more rares, a couple more elites. Take him to Elite Plus, so we do have Ira there for food. Again, trying to work on Gorvo, sticking with the Wilders here. A couple more rare cards there. We got two more summons. All right, another Elite. Hopefully it is Wilder. It is very nice. Copy of Lorzen. Final summon here. Just a couple, three rare cards. All right, so we got one card on the table. Gives us a couple more emblems there. Hoping it is going to be a copy of Saurus would be nice, which it is another copy of Eron. He is already at five stars, meaning that we are going to continue to use him um, essentially at this point as fodder because we do have the extra cards of him. So looking there, we have an Ira, we have an Ogi. We do have the Eron copy there because Eron is already five stars. So looking here, we are still going to continue being short. Cassirus, we're not using Gorbo. Look at that, we got three copies there. So even using that copy of Eron, we will still be one copy short from getting Gorbo up to at least Mythic for the signature item, but I would definitely like to get him much, much higher. But that'll do it overall for the summons. So let's take a quick look at the Oak Inn. We've gotten a lot of Poe coins. As you can see, 27,000 Poe coins. And focusing on the same heroes that we're looking for here. Definitely building these guys all the way up to our nine star furniture, which I definitely want to see. So many heroes here with so much potential. Red little twinkle there, which is good. So right off the bat, we get a piece for Eron. Once we get probably six of nine, I'm going to use some of the cards to go ahead and build out the rest of the furniture. On this one, we're just looking for random red pieces here. But the cards on the table, I want to see Eron at nine of nine and see just how much damage he does. Another card there, which is Saurus. Saurus's furniture bonus give him a lot of damage mitigation, so he's able to survive, which is vital because we do run him in the campaign. So the more damage that he can mitigate, the better, because again, we do run him in the campaign. Another red little twinkle there, which is now a piece for Gorvo. Cannot wait to have him built. Very, very soon he will be, he will be built. All right, so just a couple more legendary pieces there. A couple more, and that is all of our Po tokens, we got two cards on the table. Let's go ahead, we'll do our smart selection, which look in here, so we got Eron up. So let's look at the three piece bonuses. So here we have Eron with his three piece. We have Namora. I don't think we have enough for her three piece as of yet, because she's wearing a couple other pieces. We have two, two of her, unfortunately, at this point. Um, Laika is already got her bonus right there which she is at her four piece, which is awesome. Every normal attack targets the nearest two enemies simultaneously, so upping her damage a crazy, crazy high amount. Tassie continuing to build her, which again, I don't think she has many pieces. She's wearing all of the Taylene pieces, so she only has two at this point. Then we also do have Solus. Solus already has her three piece, which is based on the Floral Spectre actually living, even though it dies. Um, it goes into a spirit form, which is awesome, so it'll continue to cast. And then, of course, we have Saurus, already at his three-piece, I believe even higher than that. But I want to say he had Cirrus's gear as well. So we're definitely going to have to go ahead and get some of these pieces kind of set. He has three of nine, which again is his damage mitigation piece. Very, very nice. So all of our emblems at this point, we are saving. 
um, for Gorval. So once we get Gorval to Mythic, we will push him as far as we can, hopefully up to a plus 30 signature item. But looking at plus 30s, we already have Eron up, we have Almus, we have Solus, we have Saurus, and we do have furniture bonuses on Eron, on Leica, as you see there, on um, Solus and Saurus as well. So very, very powerful team here as we continue already on level 311. So definitely ready to make some campaign progression. 28-40, this team is by far dead last in the faction race. Um, they really get stalled out by the Mauler teams. Mauler teams absolutely destroy them, especially Brutus, because at this point there is no way to counter Brutus. So let's go ahead, we'll get into the campaign push. Hopefully we can finish out this chapter, would be amazing to see. So let's go ahead and we'll get into the push. As you can see with this team, we are significantly behind all of the other factions, but Swap and Source in here with a three set bonus with furniture, hopefully will allow him to live. Because remember, if he can get his full stacks, especially with this plus 30 signature item, uh, very, very hard to kill. So overall, it looks like we're gonna get this one down, which right there was Nomura's charm. And this combination of heroes has worked very, very effectively in the campaign. So we got that stage down, 13 million damage from Soros. A lot of healing, a lot of shielding overall, which was awesome to see. 28-41. We are gonna run with this team essentially till they get killed, which as you see in there, Isabella just destroyed Soros. The Void Lightning one, Void Lightning two, he was dead right out of the gate, even though we did get that one down, died that fast. So that was actually crazy. 18 million there, nine million from Leica. Leica doing a lot of damage in the campaign. This one we pull pretty much everyone out of the Spectral Disruption. As you can see, Shamira in the back is banished. She went to cast, got banished again. So literally the hero will just sit and wait for us. Right to a sleep. So that battle was absolutely dominated by Tassie, as you've seen there, from the double banish to the sleep, allowing us to do a five on four, making it very, very easy with taking Shamira out of the battle. Here it is again, banished Shamira in the back while we take down the rest of the team. By the time she comes up from the banish, she is the only hero left. Again, making it very, very easy. 12 million, 10 million there. That is what makes Tassie an S plus hero is the double mitigation she has there. Boom, Shamira goes out again into the banish, giving us time with this big burst team to get the heroes down. Gets pulled in, absolutely destroyed. So we are three for three with the Shamira banish, which is perfect. Remember in the campaign, if Shamira casts her ult, most of the time your team is dead as soon as that ult goes off. This one again, perfect pull in. We actually got a heal rate right in the middle banished, but by the time we got the turret up with the little dwarf, the dwarf is the only one left. Plus we did have a charm there, if you've seen right in the middle of the battle. Two asleep, flawless, flawless victory. This team is absolutely destroying it. And we have been gaining a lot of levels in a very short amount of time. As you can see, we're on 311 already. This one, if we go to the enemy side, we're going to have to deal with Verk's traps. Remember, they do stun. Not only do they poison, but they stun. Eron hits a trap. Eron dies right there. So he is completely out. Still get it done with the Saurus Tassi combo. 11 million, 11 million, 10 million there from Eron because he did die relatively early bringing us to 28-47. So we got a little pushback of a dwarf, but we pulled three of them in, and look, Tassie banished Tassie. Amazing. So not only is Nomura there doing the charm for the crowd control, we have Tassie doing the crowd control, and we have Eron that is doing the crowd control. So again, full Wilder team. The, the synergy in this team is absolutely flawless. What I cannot wait for, or what could be a game changer on this one, is if we do have an opportunity to get the tanking relic, and the tanking relic is going to bring Gorvo, and I believe Almas are both tanks. That could really, really bring um, some more survivability into the tanking class to make this even more effective, especially with Gorvo because it will increase the survivability, increase the survivability of our other heroes.
Because remember, if the hero with the highest attack rating is going to die, which in this team comp will be Eron every time, they will keep the hero from dying. So I, I'm not sure how much of effect that's going to have in changing Saurus out of here, but I think it is definitely going to change up the faction team dynamics overall. As you can see there, Ira was just charmed right to asleep from the banish. Again, absolutely flawless victory there. Very, very cool to see. So we are 10 stages down at this point. Um, dealing with Gorvo, this one you do have to pick up Arden very early. As you can see, we got lucky because Gorvo went to the top, which was good. So it gave us time to actually kill the bottom. Um, then Gorvo Iran went right in the middle. Golas is very tough to kill, even with the defense reduction. Very, very tough. And then Iran versus Iran and Gorvo. Again, very tough combination with the stuns, with the shields. Gorvo is very tough to kill, which is why I think with the tank relic, he is going to be that much stronger. We'll swap Iran back to the middle again. And look at that. We have a charm right there on Arden, and Arden rooted his own team. Absolutely perfect. So Arden actually rooted Scrag. Rooted Ira, if you've seen right there. So not only did Namora provide the charm, Namora provided the crowd control with the roots from Arden through the charm, which is very cool to see. Ascended Arden, I think, would be just absolutely crazy. This one we're going to swap to the top just to pick up Arden again. As you can see, there are Gorvo with the mad, mad shields and damage with that stun. Lucky for us, we crowd control them early, as you've seen right there. Kaz is another hero, very, very difficult to deal with just because of the dodge that she brings. But we did get her down as well as Ira in this one. 32 million damage, 10 million there from Saurus. Saurus, again, if he can get his stacks up, super effective, especially with his signature item. Uh, this one, we're going to peel Brutus. We put, peeled three of the five targets to the top, as you've seen. Um, what I was hoping for was, was a solid banish, which unfortunately we didn't get. But this one we swapped in Solus. If you've seen, we dropped out Namora, we dropped in Solus because of the uh, Floral Spectre member goes to a phase Spectre if it gets killed. But also the Floral Spectre people attack. Similar to Totems, similar to Minions, they go straight for the Floral Spectre to kill the thing. When they kill it, because um, Solus does have her three-piece, she will bring it back to life. This one, we swap Namora back in. In between all of these battles, there are sometimes a couple defeats. Um, that's why you might not see the, the team change up. But I'm swapping gear. I'm swapping heroes. We're going through to make progression like we always do on these accounts. Right there, Tassie with a perfect sleep. Almas, as you know, when he goes deep root, he is immune to crowd control, so he is very, very difficult. Because not only does he heal really fast, is you can't crowd control him. So it is it is very, very difficult to get Almas, especially if you have Almas and you have Nomura together. The combination of those two heroes, very difficult to kill. But as you can see here, 26 million damage there from Eron, bring us to 28-55, so 15 stages down at this point. Pull almost the entire team there. As you can see, Kasos was banished up top. Tassie teleports over there and puts him in a sleep. As we're taking out the bottom, the team in the bottom, and just Kasos remains at this point. So Kasos not only took a banish, he spent his entire time trying to deal with Tassie, which is very, very difficult to do. If any, you've seen any of your heroes chase Tassie around, very, very tough to do. This one. Perfect. Boom. Shamira got <laughs> the banish again, as it always happens, which there we go. We got a second banish up on her. Now she is the only hero left asleep and a charm. Shamira 100% nullified with the team comp we run. Um, Tassie usually always banishes her and we got a charm on her. So very, very cool to see. And we're almost done with this chapter, folks, 28-57. So just a couple more, and we might be able to finish this one out. It has been going very, very strong so far. So I'm thinking we can do it. I'm thinking the Wilder team can do it. As long as we don't fight Brutus, I think we got it at this point. 20 million damage there from Iran. Bring us to 28-58. 
Again, still running with the team comp. This one, Nemitsu, very, very tough. You have to kill him relatively early if he gets scaling. Same with Baden. If he gets the totems up, you are going to be dead. It is the only way you can really put it. So there's the sleep. Perfect. For um, Sophia in the top, we still have Brutus in his little immunity shield. Boom, it goes down, leaving just Sophia, which is an ice block. Perfect RNG with Eron's Tornado. So we got a four second break with the ice block there. 26 million damage. That was the stage no one could pass, bring us to 28-59. Very, very cool. So that last stage was the one where the Lightbearer team was stuck and the Graveborn team was stuck. So they haven't been able to make any progression because of that stage. Again, we get a Shamira ba uh, Banish, making it very easy to complete this one. Let's look at the damage really quick. 19 million, 18 million from Leica. So Leica doing a ton of damage on that stage. Bring us to 28-60. So we are 20 stages in at this point. Athalia we're dealing with, which can be very, very tough. Um, as you can see, we got Lucky. Got a couple of heroes down pretty quick. We got Shimiro with the Banish like we normally do. We have full stacks on Saurus to get this stage down. And boom, chapter 28 is done, meaning we are pushing into 29. Saurus and Laika right there all by themselves got that chapter completed. So from the Standing Stones to the Forbidden Temple, 29 is now unlocked. Let's go ahead and make some progression in here. We're going to continue this push because we have been doing absolutely phenomenal. We are 20 stages. This will be 21 stages in at this point. As you can see, this is the primary reason to build Eron. The Eron Leica shell, the, the formation shell, absolutely devastating to team comps. Um, all the way through chapter 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33. 334, even when it comes to the multiple stages as you get a little bit further. Um, Eron Leica combination is ran through a ton of stages, a ton of multi comps. Build, build Eron, build Eron, build Leica, the, the two that I cannot say enough about. Um, two heroes that you are going to use in the future that you have to have built once you start getting to a certain point. As you can see, there's Shamira almost alted. We got off the sleep allowing us to take her down to complete our first or our second stage in 29. Bring us to 29-3, so 23 stages at this point. This one we're going to go ahead and we're going to swap in Lorzen. Lorzen, even though he is classified as a mage, as you can see, the double shields there make a big difference. And the link is, is the really big difference, why he does really, really well with Eron. Um, he links a frontline enemy that Eron is damaging with a backline enemy that Eron is not damaging and allows Eron to actually split damage between both of them, killing both of them very, very fast. Not only that is he has a, an ability, the inner eye, to allow the alts to do more damage, which is very cool. As you can see, Rain is absolutely dead in the back um, just from the link that Lorzen provided. He also provides support ability with the shields that he does, making him very powerful, 28 million damage there. Even though overall he doesn't do very much damage, he puts shields on Saurus, he puts shields on Nemora. As you can see right there, double shields, um, again, increasing their survivability, especially with Nemora able to heal. Even though our main damage went down, we should be able to get this one down, which we do. Tassie went down, Eron went down pretty early on that one. 22 million damage, so Leica definitely pulling out on that stage. 29-6. This one again, Eron going to the front due to Arden. Really want to pull him away. And we're trying to space ourselves away from Gorvo's, um, Gorvo's stuns. So his big stun, as you can see there, we have Muriel banished right in the middle. Boom, popped her right into sleep. Took her down to finish the stage out. And again, I cannot say it enough. The, the, the synergy between the Wilder team um, is absolutely crazy. Eron, we're going to go in the middle. Most of the time, he can dodge. He just dodged a failure right there, which is why I put him in the middle. Sometimes I run Saurus, but working very, very well there with 
um, Eron in the middle with Athalia due to the very high dodge. Boom, Muriel is just killing Ira in the top to help us out a little bit with the charm ability. 17 million damage there. Again, Namora making heal or making um, the opponents kill themselves, which is very cool. Banish on Kaz right off the bat, even though the Artassi got banished. A big, big heal, big shield. Got the defensive reduction from um, Leica up right there. Tassie is just teleporting everywhere, but when we finally catch up to her, we can take her out really easy. 29-8, 28 stages at this point, folks. 28 stages. We are almost at a full half of a chapter, and as high as we are, I did not think at all. I know level makes a big difference into it, but the wilder, or excuse me, the maulers were always our stopping point. As you can see in this chapter, we're not fighting many maulers because maulers always destroy this team, especially particularly Brutus and Sophia destroy this team. Speaking of it, there's our maulers. Next battle, we got a bunch of maulers. Kasos, as you can see, got the banish in the bottom. Got a quick immunity shield, so I think Namora might go down, but we got a sleep, which is good. Need another banish to keep our team alive. There it is on Kasos, right in the bottom again, leaving Namitsu to fend for himself. Even the throwing axe's ability, nobody was there to get hit. Completing that stage, very, very cool to see. 29-10 is completed, so now we are 30 stages in absolutely insane 30 stages in at this point we're going to swap lores and back into this one because again i love the link as you can see the top and the bottom both linked together killing heroes in the top well we're killing heroes in the bottom makes it absolutely amazing with the link and the inner eye allows it to do more damage boom even though eron died really quick on this one we got it done with both uh, Saurus and Leica doing a lot of damage. 29-12. This is a fearful team. Just for the fact that we cannot really CC a lot of the heroes. Especially Warwick. Warwick is very difficult to deal with. And we died super quick in that one. 29-12. So this would take us 32 stages in. But again, we are just getting absolutely run over. And I bite my tongue because I spoke way too soon. We'll try it out with Lorzen in here. Um, getting absolutely destroyed in the matter of 10, 15 seconds. We, we are just getting absolutely dominated. Let's go ahead and swap in Tassie for this one. Hopefully a Banish will help quite a bit. Which we got a Charm there on Savius, which is good. In turn, we almost took down Sophia, which we just... Oh, the Tornado missed her. Almost had her down, but the tornado missed her. So we actually charmed Savius on that one, which made a big difference. Brutus got banished on this one, and he got charmed. But Namora again, went down super, super early on that one. Savius is just absolutely destroying us. Um, let's go ahead. We will try Solus for a couple rounds. In the heroes that I'm putting in here, we are trying for more than a couple rounds. I'm doing 10 or 15 attempts. Um, between swapping formations, I'm hoping the Floral Spectre will be a little bit of a, which there it is right in the middle. Savius just took it down with a hit, so it only took one hit to kill the Floral Spectre, even though she's completely maxed out. Let's try Almas. Almas, of course, deep root ability um, as a shield, as a tank, just got destroyed there as well. Um, I would definitely like to see Almas. I have him completely built. At this point, I have him completely geared. Again, he is just absolutely falling over. Let's try him on the bottom. Hopefully, he can provide a little bit of life for Namora or a little bit of nothing because he just absolutely got destroyed on that one. But Iran is still up, so it's going to be... That's it. Another defeat. All right. Again, very, very disappointed. Almas is totally geared out um, and still absolutely nothing. All right, guys, so that will conclude it for the Wilders. Look at that, though. 32 stages. Absolutely crushed it. 32 stages. 
Cannot wait to get Gorbo up and completely built and geared up. So let me know in the comments what you think. Super stoked, 32 stages, very nice progression. And as always, thank you guys for watching.